everyone. Thank you for coming tonight. It's so great to see all of you here. Hi, Susie. I do know you. <laughs> I know that's good or bad. And I'm going to learn the rest of your names. Well, I know Lori. I know. I'm Sue Hammond, the mayor, and uh, we are going to introduce ourselves so that everybody knows each other, or at least knows a name the first time. But I'll call our meeting to order for our town hall open forum meeting for the city of Perry. As I said, I'm Sue Hammond, the mayor with the city of Perry, and I'd like to start with Randy and we'll have the council people introduce themselves. All right. My name is Randy Coffey. Um, I just started on the council four months ago, maybe three, four months ago. Um, Sue selected me because uh, I'm also co-owner of Amy's Downtown Diner and that keeps me busy. And plus I've been on the fire department for quite a long time. So and grew up, graduated here. I know this town. So glad to see you all come tonight. And um, I'm also part of the committee that started this business committee. And uh, we look forward to any feedback at any time from you guys at any time. I appreciate it. Thank you. Thanks, Randy. Steve? Hi. <clears throat> Steve Wallace, also a council member. Formerly a mayor, formerly a council member. Again, I was appointed at the same time that uh, Randy was appointed. Again, look forward to seeing you uh, out there in the community. Hey. I'm Larry Lambert, also a council member. I actually uh, came on council back in December. Uh, we've been in, my wife and I have been in Perry about 22 years and decided once I'd retired twice, it was time to uh, offer up, but trying to help out with the uh, city government a bit. And, once again, I'm also one of the members of the uh, Business Affairs and Technology Committee. That you've seen us passing flyers and things around. So welcome, everyone. Hopefully we have a good, productive discussion in the next few minutes. Mindy? I'm Mindy Galbavi. I'm born and raised in Perry. Um, went to Perry High School and everything here. And I'm uh, part of the committee that got you all here and appreciate your attendance and will really appreciate any input that you have. And this is our city clerk, Devin Miller. You probably all know her more than the rest of us. <laughs> uh, Joanne Belting and her husband are in the back there. Um, she's our treasurer with the city. And you probably have written checks to her, but <laughs> she's a good person to know. Now, let's introduce each other. Susie, I know your name, so could you start? Okay, I'm, do you want us to tell us what we own? Yeah, who you are and what you own or manage. Okay. I'm Susie Chamberlain slash Cantwell. I own the flower shop, the flower gallery. Can you corner us with Carl's? Maggie Purdue, um, along with my husband, Kevin, um, I own and manage Stash at Rental Storage. Carl's from the high school there. Great. I'm Carmen Aventini. I'm the president oh. of CIB Planning. I'm actually a substitute a teacher for Justin tonight. And, um, but I'm also a, this is my third company that I've started uh, throughout my career. So I've been a small business owner for many years. And, uh, so I'm really looking forward to this discussion. Carmen is here at the committee's request. Um, CIB Planning is someone that the city has worked with uh, regarding various projects. They were a consulting firm when the Planning Commission was investigating doing a DDA. Mm -hmm. So Carmen has come tonight to be available for any questions uh, regarding development of whatever we decide, you decide you want to do. So Carmen, thanks for coming tonight. Well, thank you. Lori? I'm Lori Haven. I'm the superintendent at Perry Public Schools, and I just uh, have been have met with Sue and um, we're interested in building a stronger partnership between the city and the school district. So I'm here just to listen. I'm Karen Scoville. I'm the office manager for Lindman Construction out on Lansing Road. We are a um, engineered post frame construction building pole barns. Wonderful. Thank you for coming. Uh, I'm Scott Joseph, uh, one of the owners of Carl's Supermarket. And, oh, okay. and uh, heard about this meeting, so I just thought I'd come and Say hi. See what's going on. I don't own a business. I'm just here to watch and listen. Oh, wonderful. Well, we're glad you're here. Do you want to give us your name or no? 
Well, you know me. I'm Amy Gunther. I do know you. And I live in Perry. I grew up here. I grew up with Randy. And I work from home in Perry. I work for Memorial Healthcare. I'm a nurse, and I work from my home in Perry. So I know what it's like to work at home in Perry. Wonderful. Well, we appreciate any input you will give us tonight. Any questions? The open forum um, that we've decided to adopt for the second uh, Thursday of every month, preceding the council meeting, is one where we have invited the public in the past to present any questions, any concerns they might have. And so now we are asking you as business owners, managers, workers at home people to do the same. Would you like to give us your name and your business that you represent? <laughs> you're just hanging out? Oh, you're just delivering something. I see. Now I know who you are. I don't see you very often, and I see her. That's right, and we don't have masks on, so we look different. Um, Larry and Mindy and Randy and I have been serving now on this new committee, the uh, Business Affairs and Technology Committee, um, and since the Planning Commission and the Council decided that a DDA was not something viable for our city, we wanted to talk to you business people to see what would be helpful for you. In the meanwhile, we've also had a fairly new committee start called the Perry Community Events Committee. And so in that, we have put together some uh, event dates that I thought I'd share with you just briefly to kick off our meeting. And in saying when these are, we would like to invite you to be as involved in any one or all of them as you would like to be. Um, you know that we've had in the past a yearly big event called the Perry Fest. Well, we're not doing that this year. Uh, because of the COVID restrictions and not knowing how those were going to pan out. It's just too short of a time frame to try to put that together before September. So what we've done is August 3rd will be the Perry uh, Police Department National Night Out event that's held out here in the, the side yard in the pavilion. September 18th is a car show that has always been on the third weekend of September as part of Perry Fest, but that group asked if they could still have their car show even though we weren't having Perry Fest, so they will be doing that. That's right up here at City Hall as well. October 1st through the 29th, it, we're calling it Autumn Spirit, and what we'd like to do is have all of the businesses decorate a scarecrow, dress them up or whatever you want to do, and put that on the light pole that's closest to your business. Or if you don't have one, you can just choose one that's not somebody else's. And um, we're going to leave those up for the whole month of October. Dory Bortman, who is our events coordinator, is on vacation this week, so she couldn't be here tonight. But she will be our touch person as far as if you need help putting it up. We're hoping that um, Dave, the principal at the high school. Oh yeah, Dave Myron. Thank you, Myron. Is, he's looking into coordinate, coordinating the arts programs at the Perry Public Schools um, with those decorations and perhaps the older kids being able to help Dory put those up and take them down. October 31st, um, we will um, be having Halloween trick-or-treat, um, and we know so far that the library, the McQueen House, and some of the local businesses uptown, I haven't heard from anybody out here at the corner yet, um, are going to be uh, handing out treats for the kids during that. We will have some time from the end of November to 1st of December, we haven't set the date for it yet, the event called Stuff the Hummer, where the police department takes their Humvee down to Carl's and puts it in their parking lot and um, it gets stuffed with food for the food bank. Contingent on the food bank actually 
accepting donations of food by that time. Excuse me, I work at the food bank. We oh. will take those donations. Okay, so there we are. Carry on. That's a big yes. Yeah, okay. I mean, Tim will be here later, but okay. yeah, we had a meeting. Wonderful. And then we are going to do, hey, Bob, Christmas Fantasy, um, December the 11th. So in the past, we've had um, many events going on during that time, and um, some of those have been with school choirs caroling, singing at the fire hall, library activities have in the past included music and storytelling. The McQueen House have had Santa and Mrs. Santa um, for the children to visit in the, at the McQueen House. Um, sometimes reindeer outside the McQueen House. Um, Dave is, uh, Micah, Dr. Micah is organizing a scavenger hunt for us, and Dr. Tammy Micah is sponsoring horse-drawn wagon tours around town. So, Dory has confirmed these events. If you, your business would like to advertise that you are doing something <coughs> that, that evening, afternoon, sometime during that day, Dory Bortman would be the person to contact by calling City Hall or sending her an email to let her know what you would like to add to that events list. So I think that's everything that I have as far as events reporting. Um, so far, that's what we have put together. And I'm going to turn the meeting now over to Larry, Thank who's you. the chairman of the Business Affairs Committee. Just a little brief background. Uh, some of you have been uh, involved in prior discussions on a potential downtown development authority or DDA for the city. Uh, before I was on council, this uh, was discussed, I understand. It also came up through the Planning Commission and uh, the City Council, and it was uh, deemed not appropriate for our city at this point in time. And I just wanted to share a little bit of real quick background as to the why behind that. Once we had some uh, additional work done and consulting with our city attorney, it turned out that based on state laws that the only portion of our city that would have been eligible to participate in a downtown development authority or DDA would have been our central downtown business district, basically from the railroad tracks to, uh, to Orchard Street along Main Street. And the fact is, as we all know, there, the majority of or more than half of our businesses would have been excluded from that DDA based on geography. And so we've elected to, uh, to table any further downtown development authority discussion at this point in time for the city. And in lieu of that, we began to have some discussion about what might the merits be to forming what I'll call a business association of some type within the city. And in essence, uh, uh, Randy and Mindy, myself, and Sue basically handed out uh, informational requests for input and then subsequently the flyer that uh, generated this particular meeting. And what it's really all about is to say, is there a form that we should consider between the city and the businesses within the city and surrounding areas, not just city limit confined, but we'll call it the Perry area. Uh, is there enough synergy and opportunity to form some type of an association that would benefit mutually the businesses as well as uh, see where the city might be able to help contribute to making our, uh, our town and area thrive a bit more. Thank you very much. In the meanwhile, Bob has come in, so I'll let Bob introduce himself. We all need to do it, you too. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> Say hey, you. Uh, my name is Bob Porter. I live here at, in uh, Perry at 330 North Madison Street. I've uh, been in council since November. So. Bob's also the chair of the Parks and Properties Committee. So if anyone has interest in, in that, they meet the last Tuesday of every month. Last Tuesday of every month up here, unless maybe the next time it gets nice, we might be outside. Um, but there's lots of things going on where you have lots of plans potential plans to do things. It's, it's a long, drawn-out process in a, in a sense. Um, but our goals are kind of steep, so we'll get there. We'll make things work. I want a park system that everybody wants to go to. I'm not complaining about it on social media yet. So. There we are. 
again. So now we'd like to invite any one of you to uh, speak up, tell us what concerns you have, what you would like to see develop from this, what ideas you have, how we can help. Just raise your hand or just start talking. We have one person on Zoom that might want to speak. Okay, we could invite our one person on Zoom if you'd like to do that. Um, person on Zoom, if you would like to speak at this time, you can either raise your hand to identify yourself or unmute yourself so that I know you want to speak. I don't know if anything is happening at this time, but I'll let you know if it's just a question. I know one topic that has come up from um, the down, the old downtown area, the original Perry downtown area, is parking, um, and that that sometimes is difficult um, to find parking spots right out in front of the businesses. Um, so that is one topic. Um, certainly, we would welcome any suggestions, ideas people might have, how we can. Um, increase our parking in that area. Um, I was talking with John Souter, the superintendent for our DPW today, about um, sidewalks out at the intersection and trying to get some grant money to help build sidewalks on the areas out there um, that don't have them. Some do, but most do not. Um, so that certainly is another topic of discussion. We've, we've given you some thoughts as far as events. We're talking about just doing small events, if you will, um, throughout the year, this year, and then deciding if we do want to jump back into a big event like Perry Fest for next year. So if you have thoughts on that, we'd like to hear from you. What's the school have to say? What do you guys have? And do you have any things in mind to either help with us, us help you, or? Um... Yeah, I mean, when so Sue and I sat down, it's been a little while now, uh, maybe a month or so ago, and talked about ways um, that we could provide more support to the city overall, but also engage our youth and engage our staff to be more a part of the community. So we're very interested. I know, Bob, um, we've communicated via email a couple of different times. We talked about some of the park events. You know, could our art teacher provide something like face painting or art in the park or something along those lines? We have some fantastic um, physical education teachers. Could they provide, you know, we have mountain bikes. Could they provide a biking experience through maybe some of the parks or um, the downtown area with students? Because um, we were awarded a grant a number of years ago, so we have all the bikes and all the helmets. We use them during the school year. Um, but certainly we could, you know, based on, I don't know what the liability would be, but it would be great to get those out and about and encourage families just really connecting our families with the Perry community as well. Um, in my last two years here, I, you know, we have um, seen declining enrollment. We've been seeing it for the last probably seven years. Um, the pandemic obviously hit everybody hard, uh, but we really want to bring that sense of school community and um, the, just the community within the city and the larger, broader community in the area. Um, we're interested in hosting something, I think October 8th I th um, is our homecoming game. So we're really interested. We have a fantastic spot with the way our campus is located with the football field and then the middle school and the high school. We have that large parking area. We would really like to have that parade route come through and um, do something similar to a cookout or like hot dogs, chips, dinner for families, have some music, Have just have an opportunity for people to connect with each other prior to the game so that it isn't just you just come to the game. And not, not that we shouldn't coming to the game to watch um, watch our kids play uh, but just expanding on it you know we want our families to feel invested we want them to want to be a part of the Perry community and uh, and we recognize that um, sometimes it's difficult you know I shared with Sue um, when I first took the position in Perry 
driving downtown, you wouldn't necessarily know anything about Perry schools. You wouldn't see, you don't see anything referencing Ramblers or anything about the Perry public school community. So we're very interested in tying that together. I think it's mutually beneficial for the city, for the community, you know, and the outlying areas as well. Like you said, the city is a small portion of, of all the townships and et cetera. So we're very excited. Um, we have a strategic plan that we put in place uh, right before the pandemic, of course. Uh, we had a community partnership meeting and we identified seven goal areas. And among them is strengthening community relations and outreach um, and really helping our families to feel a part of this broader community. One of the things that Dave Myron yep. mentioned, Principal Myron mentioned when he came to the events meeting was an idea to uh, purchase some banners that identify the school. I don't know if they would have a Rambler on them or say Perry Ramblers or what it would say, but and um, put those up on the light poles. Yep. Um, and we'll have to talk about the, the specifics of it, but at that meeting we, we said maybe we could put those up during the whole month of October because that homecoming is in October and then replace them with the holiday banners and then put them up again in the spring around graduation yeah. time. So there, there's one way we could visually <laughs> make a connection to the downtown areas and to the school. Yeah. And that would be great. And the other thing that we discussed pre-pandemic and hopefully by next spring possibly this could be an opportunity for us, but we would love to host a community showcase. And we have uh, just amazing facilities for the size district we are. Um, and our facilities are very well kept. They're large, spacious, and we can host some great events. We would love to invite community members, businesses from the greater Perry area to come in and we could focus, uh, highlight student work and um, some teachers as well as community businesses. And um, I've seen this in a couple of other districts, and ultimately the only rule that typically is enacted is that everything needs to be free of charge, because you don't want to exclude anybody based on cost. But ultimately, it's just an opportunity for any type of business or service organization. Um, we did one in my former place of employment. We had everybody. We had dentists and massage therapists and veterinarians and um, and then it's nice to sprinkle students in between, so it was all um, just a free-flowing opportunity. And we had some performances by some of the student groups. We could bring in FFA, our robotics, we have a great eSports program. So, um, and then in the meantime, also highlight the businesses in our area. And so that's always been a very nice event, and I think it's something that would be well-received here in this community as well. The other thing we talked about in connection with homecoming date of October 8th was the um, uh, businesses decorating their windows to coordinate with the theme for the homecoming and then uh, the school, I think student council does a judging for that and awards something to the best window. And then also um, it was mentioned to maybe do a tailgate. Yeah, kind yeah. of goes along with what you were talking about uh, up at the school. Yeah, um, businesses could certainly bring in food, or people could bring their own food. We haven't again really nailed down details, but this would be a great spot for businesses to set up and have food available, or red and white carnations available from the flower shop, or you know, other let your imagination you go could wild there. Some but food trucks to come too, just yeah. for some variety. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And I think fun. just an awareness, yeah. like bring an awareness, and um, and encourage a sense of community. Mm -hmm. Can I make a suggestion yes. to that as well? When they, um, so the suggestion of judging the windows is that something you guys have always done, or is that something you wanted to incorporate in the future? I don't know if they've done it recently. They did it. Oh, okay. before. probably what, two years ago yeah. before what, the pandemic. What do you do for, or you just acknowledge that, that they, they, that business did a good job? I'm not actually sure. We'd have to ask Dave because student council runs it at the high school. Is there any way 
And again, it's just involving them that you would give free tickets to the game that night would be part of the winning. Oh, event. absolutely. So yeah. I just yeah. thought as a, yeah. they would incorporate it, they, you know, um, yeah. they already might be Perry. And yeah, that's a great idea. Something simple that you could, that would be a gift that probably doesn't cost you guys yeah. anything. And, <laughs> but we have to pay to get in, right? Yeah, yeah, that's a great idea. Good thought. What else shall we talk about? You took the window thing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh. I can talk for two. I have two things. I you mean? Yeah. I help all of you. Um, you mentioned the parking. We go to the library two, three times a week, and we try to go after your place closes, which you understand, because the parking is not good. And I wish we could park in the back, but they don't have that back door open like they did when we were kids. You remember you could go in the back? Can't do that anymore. So, and um, so, the parking is a problem. I appreciate that you brought that up. Don't ever give up on the parking. <laughs> I wish when they had done redone the downtown, they did slatted spots. Drive in, back out. Even if we could do it on one side of the street, dump the left turn lane that no one knows how to use anyway. We don't put snow in the middle. Remember when we were kids, we put snow in the middle of the road. We don't do that anymore. It doesn't snow like that. Slat his spots, at least in front of the library in his place, down that line, in front of Spalding's, mm -hmm. where we will start taking donations again for the food bank, so it's easy for people to drop off their stuff and just back right out. So, probably too small of a road, but well, yeah, I you never know. <laughs> the great That's idea. Road, I, think I, I think it is a speed issue with them, Don, that yeah. is why they can't do Because it, our main street is M52, Everything yeah. from the parking to the speed limit is controlled by MDOT, not by the city. Right. Well, you mentioned parking. So no, I mean, something on the we side can, street. We could be certainly better. inquire. Um, like, we can't park in the back because the fire department has all that. No, that is open to you. It is open? Yeah, that's all yes. public parking. Most public. Okay. Just don't park where it says no parking. Are there lines? There, there's one that would be south of that. Telephone pole right there, that's where our tower comes out. All right. We can't I'm going to ask Carol if it'll Other than that, that, you can park along the back um, by the greenhouse. And if the TDS trucks aren't there and everything, because they park there when okay. they come in. So, But there, there's. But no it is a problem. If you have a lot of elderly patrons to your place, you yes. know, and you get all these yep. kids fluffing books, you know? Yeah. It sounds lazy, but we don't want to walk around the building. Exactly. Here, anyway, it was, so don't ever get us. It was diagonal parking, yeah. if you recall. Was so we've, we've, had, had, we've had it uptown, oh. I would let them but I don't know um, why they changed, they, they, yeah. they decided to change it. I'll bet you haven't gotten it away. Diamondale used to be the same way, and now it's all parallel parking. Hmm. Well, I will certainly ask. I, I don't mind asking. Tell you, no. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Can someone tell me why you can't use the rear entrance of the library anymore? I can't address Karen, that. I don't know. Probably. They probably have already been. We can ask. I was, I was um, involved in when they were talking about getting a different location. And they said that for safety, they didn't like anyone going in and out for both the employees that were there by themselves, for kids sneaking out. So maybe you like could that. explore security systems safety. or cameras or exactly. something. Exactly, or, or even hours. That would solve a lot of problems. A lot of kids are not gonna be out there after seven o'clock at night. Yeah, the library so, closes at three or four. It seems like it would be more close. of a safety issue that it is locked. So, um, mm -hmm. that, but I do agree with what you said. Put a speed bump in the middle. If they're worried about traffic or automobiles going by past the door, put a speed bump in there. Does the rear entrance where that is, does it come right out to the alley? No, like there's, there's, there's no, is it well, there, was, there, yeah. Yeah. there was even no. concern. No. Because of the way it's designed, that somebody could sneak in and hide until they were closed and everything, and then you know, there's the last person there could be in danger, and now they even discuss that as to what they have those to motion sensors that will hang. If there's other ways, I could, I believe that we could fix that. Yeah. Those concerns. Yeah. Take care oh, of those those concerns. doorbells that were yeah. the doorbells yeah. here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that someone knows that the door has been opened. And I do not know if they addressed any of those right. suggestions. I don't know. 
We do have some library um, improvements to the building and some re maintenance and uh, renovation. Mm -hmm. And on that list uh, of projects uh, that I sent to the commissioners, Shawasa County commissioners, to see if we can get a piece of their windfall. Um, that's on that list. Right. So it was a general library needs thing. So maybe we could um, incorporate a camera that would show who's ringing the bell. You know, you've seen those camera doorbells. Mm. And it could then maybe show who's the librarian, who's at the door, remotely unlock it, let them in, or not, depending. Um, so, I mean, that might be something we could incorporate in that. Which goes on with your business and technology committee that you were talking about. Yes. Who happened to all be here. There you go. So, for <laughs> that one, can I say something else, just on behalf of the yeah, community? Yeah, absolutely. Um, where I live, I have Daystar, high-speed, fiber-optic internet, and some of you do, too. Love it. On Facebook, on the community group, there's been many, many people and maybe you guys have been discussing this, I'm sure it comes up frequently, griping about, wow. Oh, yes. They yes. are down <laughs> a lot. And until they moved into this house, I had wow for many, many years that they are awful. Yeah, the downtime right. is horrendous. Um, Daystar has downtime occasionally, as you guys have not wish you have them. But um, it's, the uptime is much, much better, not to mention it's a lot faster and cheaper, especially if you buy your own modem. So over time, just keep I would love it if you would keep um, close touch with Daystar and encourage them to keep pushing out. I recently looked at their coverage area in Perry, and they're getting some of our major areas, um, but just keep pushing it. You know, there's a lot, like you said, enrollment now because there's a lot of homeschoolers. We homeschool. I work at home. And a lot of us need that fast internet. And so to have so much downtime. Now, the downside of that is I feel for the wild contractors who, if Daystar took over, they're out of work. You know, they're always looking to sign someone up for WOW and get the commission. But maybe they can get jobs for Daystar. WOW <laughs> <laughs> well, is awful. You go to call them, it's and awful. it's like a half hour wait of your And they're time not really the local. Phone. Daystar is a local business. Um, if just keep, I would love to see us keep encouraging Daystar to do more in theory and get out to down all the roads in theory. Is Amy is Daystar? Are you talking about internet only, or are you talking about cable? I don't think they cable television. So I'm talking about the high speed internet. Do, yeah. So it's just internet. I think you can bundle it, and the cable would come from a different provider. But yeah. Well, that's gonna. I'm glad you kind of even said that. I don't know if I'm gonna step on Larry's toes on this, but I encourage you, and we encourage you. That's another step to this whole committee that we have is our website here. Um, we urge you to all to go out on there, give us some tips, so maybe it's something we're overlooking, because we're trying to refine it, um, bring it up to date, make it easier for you guys to look through. Um, that's one key spot that we would love to see emails from you, just little suggestions, something you want to add on there, maybe your business is doing something, we can present, uh, you know, put you on the, the head page or whatever. Um, I believe Devin's looking into it a little bit more of, of keeping it um, more current and everything. So um, that's one key area we would like to see some more input from you guys. And um, again, just uh, spread the word of what you guys have seen here tonight. We hope that we might do this every month for a little while and just get the community to come back and let us all get back together and hopefully somebody takes the reins and wants to start the business side of it and we we want to work together with you guys but if we don't never talk to you we don't know what's going on um, the photoshop's been around for a long time and, and carl's i know the community used to do a lot of neat things back in the day when i was younger i'd, I'd come and stay with my grandma and here all week during paper fest and everything so um, i'd love to see that come back and we, we have a great community here Halloween's awesome. That's getting huge. Um, and then the Christmas thing is also great, too. So I, I, I think your events committee is doing an awesome job. So, And then with the National Night Out will be an awesome thing, too. So. 
Have you, if there was a Perry Business Association, would the businesses have to pay dues? That's all that, to that's you guys. Up to, to, yeah. you guys and just, then have you talked to the Chiwassee Chamber? Because a lot of Perry businesses are already part of the Chiwassee Chamber and seeing if you can do it. They, the they used to be part of yeah, the Chiwassee Chamber. They okay. used to be. Pay, but, years ago, in the yeah, late yeah. 90s, early 2000s, Perry had its own chamber. And it was then called the Southwest Shiawassee Chamber of Commerce. But many businesses were part of it. It was very active, um, did a lot with the community or in the community. Um, but it waned. And then so few people were interested in running the chamber, they decided to join with the Owasso Chamber, and I forget what that is called. The Shiawassee. The Shiawassee. The Shiawassee. I was, I've been involved yeah. with it for yeah. over 10 years, yeah. Yeah. but I've kind of taken a step back. Yeah. Yeah. I, would, uh, I was involved uh, like with the leads group, mm -hmm. like business leads group, where we, and we did, depending on, you know, who the leader was, we did a lot of interesting things, like, you know, we go visit new businesses and, um, you know, just see what everybody was doing and, you know, have speakers come in and Maggie, so. did you find that the focus, though, was mainly in Owasso, Karana, not, or did they reach down and do There it? were, there were, yeah, the more, you know, the majority were from Owasso, but there, there were some from, um, trying to think, Lang Langsburg and, you know, um, Corona, which is, you know, right next door, and I'm trying to think. Oh, um, there was, out from Duran, there was a few, you know, a couple from Duran, and, you know, so it was, let me see, at one time there was, oh, Jim, the photographer, he passed away, he, well, yeah, you know, he was from Perry, he was involved in the group, but, yeah, most of them were from Owasso, but you know, they they did they did go around and invite everyone. You know, they would go visit. Sure. Good. Um, Larry, we we talked a little bit about hoping that the business owners, managers would um, have somebody step forward as a leader of that group. I mean. We, the council, in, in the city uh, employees, would love to see a business association or some type of a, a group develop where there's a cohesive center um, who will then say, city, we need this, or city, we'd like to participate in this, or we're going to do this how would you like to be involved? That type of event. So we're not here to tell you guys what to do. <laughs> we would like to see what you'd like to do. Yes, sir. We have a business in another town, a small town, and they had a group there. They're not a city, they're a village, but they have their leaders there. And one thing that they came up with a DBA, geez, I'm going to guess 10 years ago. As I get older, time goes faster. Mm -hmm. And they all blend in. And they try to do a lot of different things, and it, <laughs> it put a lot on a lot of us businesses. We did have a small fee for it. Mm -hmm. um, it wasn't beneficial for us, but we remained part of it. Just we felt we owed the village and everything. They supported us and everything. And, not that we didn't participate, but it didn't do it. The biggest thing they did, though, then is, and it was, the businesses were included in it. It was more for a community type thing. They kind of have a summer, it was called a street dance. It's kind of like a block dance at the beginning of summer and then one around Labor Day. And they would close off like a block. You couldn't do it here where they do it there. I mean, the traffic here is a lot worse. But they would do a block and then they would have either a local person that does DJs or they would have local bands come in and play. And it was a good time just for the kids to come in and parents kind of mingled with one another. The kids, if you want to call it dance, danced. But uh, it was just a good time for the community. I mean, other people from other towns could come around, but it was more 
more for the community to do that. And a restaurant might have a chicken stand or something like that where they did chicken meals, hot dogs, whatever. We would take, we would have a place where we would have coolers and we would sell refreshments for them and not rip them off on it. You know, and yeah. just try to have our faces out in the community. Sure. Since the pandemic, I haven't been there in six years. I used to live in town there, so I don't know if they still do it. I don't know if the village council is, is it energetic as what it was 20 years ago and 10 years ago. I don't know that. Maybe it is. But since the pandemic, I know, of course, they haven't had it. I mean, that's kind of, I don't know if the DBA even exists in the last year and a half. Sure. I know it did before that. My brother wanted not to be a part of it anymore because it didn't benefit us. I, says, I told him we need to pay the under $200, whatever it was. Just $200. I mean, you're a part of the community. We need to do it and be a part of it. And that's what, they do have a farmer's market. I think the DBA does have something like that. They do have a farmer's market from, don't quote me, from June till October. Maybe it's not even, I, I'm not sure exactly when it is, but it's every Thursday. I do know that. Good, good ideas. We have talked a little bit about farmers market. Just, I'd like to, since Carmen's here, take advantage of his presence and his knowledge. It, Carmen, can you share with us um, what businesses such as ours can do to form a, a group, an alliance? What what uh, thoughts do you have about that? I think the first thing is you need to identify what it is you're looking to accomplish, what is the goal of the organization, you know, this group that's being formed. Um, and, and that was actually a, a good conversation that came up when we were talking about the DDA. The comment was made that, well, if we have a DDA, who's going to be on the board? Because DDAs are typically comprised of primarily business people. You have government representatives and, um, you know, others from the, the community, but it's primarily led by the business community. And so, you know, the discussion about taking a step back and seeing if there's interest in the business community in terms of forming an organization like this. Um, and really the key becomes what is it that you're looking to accomplish? What are the, you know, what are the tasks? Because you mentioned in the other community, it, it kind of waned, that people weren't as involved anymore. Um, I find that the su successful groups are ones who, they have a purpose. This is what they want to do. This is what their goal is and this is, you know, this is their mission and they stick with it. They don't, they try not to stray too much from, you know, what their primary goals are. Mm -hmm. And um, I mean, I'm most familiar in, in terms of this area, I live in the Fenton area, and I'm most familiar with, with that. And, and it's grown a lot in the past, you know, uh, 20 plus years. Yeah. When I, you know, when I, I've been the planning consultant for the city for 27 years, which is kind of unheard of. And I know when I started there, there was like 8,000 people in the city downtown was a mess, the school district was so-so, you know, the, the city was just kind of there, and, um, you know, everyone pulled together, including the business community and the school district, and, you know, and, and I think the city manager said something a while back that I thought was very true. He, he said, you know, we didn't just get a, a really good downtown um, just because we have a good downtown. It didn't just happen. It took a lot of work, but it's because we developed a great community. It was everything. It was the schools. It was, you know, it was the and, and the, the thing I, I pull out of that out of that group is there's a lot of business owners and a lot of community people that are really involved. Not not like in everything, but in the, the things that they're interested in. They've got a lot of involvement from people across the board and um, a lot of community support. Um, I know I serve on the education foundation <coughs> for the school district. And I've been in there for like 14 years, and you know, it used to be we'd have to search for people to serve on it. Now we have applications and a review process, and we have to tell some people, no, you can't be on the foundation board right now. You'll have to wait. And what have you done to get on the board? And so it, it's evolved, yeah. and I think that's if I can, you know, give any advice, it's it's okay to start small. Um, there's a lot of people out there looking to live in communities like Perry, and that's where it starts. You know, it's about investment. 
It's not just investment in business, it's investment in homes, you know, people that want to move here. Um, and, you know, marketing the community is, is a very good goal. You know, um, here's what we have here, letting the outside world and the people know that what are the, the benefits of the community, what are the great things that you have here. Um, malls, I think we all know malls are declining. Um, I know we're involved in at least three or four redevelopment, mall redevelopment projects right now. Um, and I think we're going to continue to see that, but retail is going to still be strong. Um, it's not all going to be internet based. So, in fact, the, the mark, one of the top marketing people in the state lives in Langsburg and her company, she's, she was arguing with me a month ago, like, do not say that retail is going to decline as much as you think it is. It's going to, it's coming back strong. You know, the pandemic, there are people being cooped up, they're, they're tired of just ordering online, they want to get out and they want to shop. And, um, you know, and communities are looking for small towns to live in. They don't want to live in, in necessarily in the big cities. They still want fun, exciting things to do, but they want to live in a small town and they want to be, feel safe and they like the camaraderie of the community. So, you know, I, I think if there's a message for the businesses, um, you know, get involved. It doesn't have to be a big time consuming thing. It can just be, you know, be involved in something you're really interested in. Um, but working together as a group and, um, if nothing else, marketing the community. Um, I mean, I, I listen to a lot of, um, you know, small business type things. And, you know, um, I've been to courses and stuff. And the one thing that comes up over and over again is, you know, what's the most important thing for a small business? And it all comes down, it's marketing. You, could, you don't have to have the best product, you don't have to have the best management, you know, there's a, you, but you have to have the best marketing. I mean, what's the, what's the biggest and most successful restaurant in the world? It's McDonald's. They don't have the best product, you know, but they have the best marketing, you know. And so, um, you know, that, if, there were, if there were a good goal to start with for the, for the businesses, it would be come together, um, market jointly, uh, promote yourself jointly. Uh, think about having, look at how the malls operated. Uh, even though they're taking a hit, it, it wasn't their fault. Um, they, malls were very good at marketing and tenant mix. And, you know, they, they knew, they had it down to a science. So, you know, learn, learn from them. You know, when, and when you're in a mall and a store closes up, what do they do? They cover it so you can't see it, okay? What do we do often with the business that pulls up? We put a for sale or for rent sign up in front and we let the windows get dirty and allow it to deteriorate if it's not occupied for a long period of time. Okay. Uh, let's operate like a mall. You know, uh, maybe the, the business group can say, hey, uh, while you're marketing this, can we keep the window clean? Can we set up displays? We can rotate our businesses throughout there to do <coughs> displays. We can make sure that it's lit at night so people can see in. You know, little things like that. Look at what the malls did. Um, th there's lessons to be learned from that. Yeah, so. no, it's like more like entertainment, like the outside malls where, mm -hmm. you know, it's not just shopping, mm -hmm. it's like a destination point. Yeah, you know, what do you do? What, the young people especially. You know, they like to sit out at, outside and get days. Well, we all do, but, yeah. um, you know, it's... Uh, yeah, Eastwood, well, they had, like, those, um, they, they would, on uh, Tuesdays, they'd have concerts out there. Yeah. yeah. which was, and they'd have, they'd have some good bands that were, you know, enjoyable. Mm -hmm. The promotion they're talking about are great. <laughs> um, that, that goes hand in hand with, you know, the other marketing. Um, advertise as a group. You don't have to advertise just as one business. Advertise as a whole group and use your spending power to, to draw people into the area. The other thing I found is almost every community you look at, um, you're, you're, you have what's called retail leakage, which is you're losing retail dollars to outside areas and outside businesses. There's communities that don't have a dry cleaning storefront. You can't bring your dry cleaning in there. So they go to other communities for it. Why can't that community have a dry cleaning? Even if it's not where they clean, at least they have an outlet. Um, I, I'll bet if you, I bet if you took a hard look at it, you'd find, because every community has it, you'd find some retail leakage. Oh, absolutely, yeah. One of the um, two things that I've known, I've seen, and this is yours is a bigger picture of it, was 
um, that really, really, I heard a lot of good input is, one is the um, ladies' night. A bunch of the businesses had come together and did that, and I hope they continue that. That was a ball mm -hmm. and simple, and I spent money. Um, and in the bag, even though not all the businesses were open, because we don't have a lot of retail, they still got their advertisement out, they went around, they worked as businesses together to promote each other. And it was really, really fun and really, really cute. And I think they did it for two hours. They didn't make it, you know, overly worked. It worked itself. Um, and then the other aspect that happened, which we're doing it again this year, is the businesses were wanting an event that incorporated with them. So we started um, the Christmas fantasy. And what we did is we went door to door to each business and said, will you open your doors? We're, we understand, you know, labor costs. We're asking whether, you know, you're, you're not paying, that you will come as a family and open your doors and say, this is who we are. And um, so we got this, they did the scavenger hunt. We had one business that goes around and does the scavenger hunt. <coughs> but what we learned out of just the first year is that Santa Claus is there, so there's an immediate attraction where you're, you're, you're getting families coming in. And then you had the scavenger hunt going on and the fire department. We had um, giveaways. But they, the scavenger hunt made them go into every business, and what they found out is so many people living in this community, two years, five years, ten years, and they never even knew they had an insurance company in the downtown area. Mm -hmm. So it's a very inexpensive, I mean the city promotes most of the expense part of it, but the businesses are actually running that night. They are the stars of that night, and people are getting to know them. Other than, again, like you were saying, you get you can get burnt out or it doesn't benefit you, but you're letting people know that your business exists. And two, it's something that they look forward to, and then they want to live here, and then they're going to come back. And then they're going to know, hey, I just moved here, and I need to go buy a hammer at Darlings, and I need to... Mm -hmm. and so it just, those two events, I know the community really liked. And, and again, we don't want the businesses constantly opening up at, after hours and having to do these promotions. I understand that you already put your whole life into your business, your, your owners, but um, things like that really do work. I'm surprised we don't have sidewalk sales or anything like that, that while you're open, something's going on, but... Um, yes. it, and the same point, um, and I know it's my choice to be where I am and stuff, but sometimes I personally feel that people don't realize that I'm on a side street, and it wasn't, I put myself there, I bought the business, and that's where it was. Um, but sometimes <laughs> I think maybe I feel that, and it's just me personally, and I apologize, I feel like I'm forgotten because I cannot tell you how many times I have someone come in. Oh, I didn't know there was a flower shop. Well, do you go to Carl's? Do you go to you? We have this little sign, and I would have a bigger sign, but I can't because of ordinances. That I think that we, as a business person, and I apologize. I try to patronize personally all the businesses that I can in my community, and I think if we all did that, we would be a much better, stronger community as ourselves. And like with the ladies' night, I think that was great. But again, I'm like three blocks away, and I would love to be included, and I didn't know about it until after the fact. But sometimes I feel I'm out there all by myself, and I'm kind of forgotten, you know? And I think in the same way, like with the Rite Aid, if you don't, or, you know, or the grocery store, or the gas stations, where if you don't need it, you don't go there. Yeah. Like that example, I needed a gift today, and I could have jumped in and ran somewhere else, but I went to a local store to support them. Because if we don't do that, and sometimes I want to say, as a flower shop, if, if we all don't go to that flower shop, because I know you can go down the street and you can go wherever, I'm not going to be there. So when you need that juniper flower, or when you need that hammer, or when you need that, that burger at that last minute, or that library book that you need, or the kids need to get on the internet, if we don't patronize personally, we're not going to be here.
Sure. Absolutely, I agree. And that kind of leads me into um, a closing thing because we have our council meeting at 7, so we're going to have to wrap up. But I was looking on the internet um, at other cities' websites uh, for ideas to, for hours, and I saw one city had a page of local businesses, and it was a list of three columns of local businesses, where it was, what they offered. So I would like to have Dory, uh, who is our web uh, creator, um, do that, but we need information from all of you, what you want to have um, on that website. So send me as much information as you would like on there, and then we will whittle it down to the size it needs to be and send it to you for proofing before we post it. Um, and it'll probably take us a couple months to get this finalized, but if you could all work on that for me, um, that would get us started with that. And if you would take away from this today thoughts of what you would like to do in the events that were mentioned. Mm -hmm. And the big question of tonight is, would you like to meet again as businesses, or do you want the business committee to make that decision and then contact you. And if I could piggyback on that, because I had a written down and I know we're kind of from prep up real fast, but is there a better time to meet? Sure. Can we do a luncheon? We've done, we've done luncheons in Williamston through the chamber. Is that a better time for you guys to meet for an hour? And go well, it depends if it's on golf tonight. I can do that. No. Yeah, don't do it on Monday. Don't do it on Monday. So, and, and for that point, I'm going to say, I'm a small business person, so usually it's just me and maybe one other person. Exactly. So for lunch hours, that would be great, but I'm kind of on a time restraint that I have a limited amount of time. Mm -hmm. So that would be my, but I say, I personally think, I think this is a great opportunity for us to all get together and share because I guess I'm just a small and I'm young, and I apologize, I'm, I'm young, but I'm not young. But I feel that if we, and through the pandemic, I've learned a lot, and I feel if we don't invest in our community, we might as well just go to a, a bigger city, bigger whatever, or just be a person. That's right. We, we are limited somewhat. Uh, with our geographic layout, we've got new development here uh, across Lansing Road and um, up M52 and another group of businesses that are more established, more long-term down in the older downtown area mm -hmm. and then Susie kind of connects us there and Carl's mm -hmm. but there's spotty connections along the way so it's it's hard to get everybody together physically and as a group because I know you all work so hard and the last thing you want to do after a long day of working is come to a meeting but um, Let's leave it open for now as far as the next meeting. Um, like Randy mentioned right at the beginning, it may just turn out to be the second Thursday of next month at 6 o'clock. But we'll let you know what, the word, uh, the word, what, what you guys we come up with. I know they used to have it quarterly in Diamondale. They used to have it quarterly. The marketing is a bit sure. tedious. Sure. No. Well, I think um, after things get a little more established, quarterly is a great idea. Mm -hmm. Uh, but I, we need to maybe get some more ideas, get some more thoughts from you, and now that you know what we're all about, maybe you'll come up with some more things. Can I just say, add one more? It's kind of two more things, but I'll make it quick. Okay. I also grew up, well, you guys have heard of Gizzard Fest, haven't you? Oh, yeah. And I actually went to school with a guy who owns Joe's City now, and they had Gizzard Fest, and they end up stopping it because they wanted to push. Every, it's got to be a, it's got to be you guys and us together. That's what it amounts to. It can't be all pushed on businesses. It can't necessarily be pushed on you guys necessarily. It's got to be a teamwork thing, really. I mean, uh, uh, I know the business owners always say they have so much time, and trust me, I know I'm 65, 70 hours a week. My wife wasn't happy I was coming here tonight, but she understands, but she wasn't happy about it. But um, it, that's just the way it is. Gizzard Fest, 
And then they got some other people in their city leadership now that have taken some of the things off Joe himself and they had it for the first time in five, six years again this year. They included him in it, but a lot of these people made a lot of the decisions more than him. And they were putting a lot of pressure on him and he, it just wasn't worth it to him. Sure. And, uh, well, that's what we would like and that's, uh, I'm glad you mentioned that because that is certainly one. And that's where I think even like. the city dance yes. kind of got the community kind Works of together. together. And I'm not saying you have to do that, but it, it's, it's a start of thinking of something, Absolutely. trying to get a little bit Absolutely. of community where they're amongst one another. And even for me, I mean, I would have no problem doing it, going up there and just showing my face, if nothing else. I mean, Great. yeah, I live 40 miles away, but, <laughs> but yeah. I can put in my time to be with the people from town here. If I want them to support me, I should be there to also show my face too. Thank you very much for that. I and uh, I'm going to have to adjourn our meeting, but we'll be in touch. Thank you all for coming. Meeting's adjourned. It's seven. Thank you all for coming, and um, we'll be in touch. But please send me your information for the web site and any other ideas you might send want it to, to you share. Or? You can send it to City Hall, you can send okay. it to the mayor, you can send okay. it to Dory, you can okay. call, we'll come get it, whatever. Right. We'll, whatever. You can call the three people on the committee, Larry, Mindy, and Randy. I've talked to him a few times. And uh, we, will, yeah, we will swing by, pick something up, whatever it takes. Sounds good. Thank you very much.
And then it's just kind of gives the Pastor Walworth is here to get us focused and uh, in <coughs> touch with the person in charge. Pastor Walworth, if you'll lead us in the invitation. All right. Uh, dear Father, what an absolute joy and privilege it is for us to be together here in this great and free country. There's so much going on, Lord, and yet this is the best place in the entire universe to live. We ask you, Lord, to be with us tonight, that you would uh, uh, permeate this building, Lord, that you would be uh, the focus in so many minds, Lord, that we might concentrate on you, Lord, that we might therefore concentrate on the things that are valuable and good and necessary. Bless this council, Lord, as they deliberate, as they move forward, God, in this community. We pray these things in Christ Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Thank you. <coughs> and now at 7.08, uh, I'll call our meeting to order, and we'll begin with the pledge. Thank you. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Okay, well, thank you for coming. We appreciate your time. Randy had to leave. Okay. And uh, Devin, if you'd like to take the roll call. Okay. Randy Coffey. Mindy Galvey. Here. Adam Grass. Larry Lambert. Here. Bob Porter. Here. Steve Wallace. Here. Mayor Sue Hammond. Here. All is accounted for except council member Randy Coffey and Adam Grass. And now we'll move to approval of our agenda. I move that the agenda be adopted as printed. A second. We have a motion and second to approve the agenda. All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed nay. Motion passes. And now to uh, the reading and approval of the minutes of the previous meeting. I move that we suspend the rules, waive the reading, and approve the minutes from the June 3rd, 2021 regular meeting. Second. I one amendment to that. Okay, but The committee reports, I think it's just a typo. Uh, on my committee it says GIS and geocache. It should be GPS, of course, not geocache, and geocache. We, we kind of eliminated the geocache, so, but the GIS is, that is, I don't know what that stands for, so I think it's just a typo. Say that again, please. It's what, what should I be saying? Um, committee reports, the very last sentence that says GIS and geocache. Yes. It should be GPS, GPS. course. We, we eliminated the ge, uh, geo course. Sorry, that's what that. I heard. That was me. So make that amendment. I, I'm all for approving the minutes. I'm okay with that amendment. Okay. It's been moved by Steve and seconded by Mindy. Or was it Mindy? Larry. Larry. Mindy. Larry, sorry. To um, approve the minutes with the correction to GPS instead of GIS. 
All those in favor indicate by saying aye. 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 All those opposed by nay. Motion passes. Now I know that we have um, a pre-approved report uh, presentation that we're going to have from the food bank, but not everybody's here yet, correct? Right. Okay, so we will, if council, if you're okay with it, we'll hold on that till the rest of them arrive. Yeah. Then we'll come back. Mm -hmm. So we'll go into public comment. Does anyone here? Oh, hi, Kelly. There's part of them. We have one more person. One more comment. Okay. Um, uh, does anyone have public comment they'd like to bring forward at this time? If not, we'll move on to communications. I think Devin has a few to share. Okay. I received correspondence from Adam Grass, June 17, 2021, to Council. I have enjoyed my time serving on Perry City Council. However, life and schedule has prevented my regular participation at this time. I submit my resignation, but hope to join this body again in the future. Adam Grass. <coughs> and then we received a report for, from the Compensation Commission, and they have submitted their minutes. The meeting was called to order on June 1, 2021 at 7 p.m. Attendance include James Huglet. Chris McDivitt, Mike Tobias, Craig Weckwert, and Melissa Woodson. First order of business was to elect a chair and vice chair. Motion was made by Huglet, seconded by Weckwert to select Mike Tobias as chair. Motion was carried unanimously. Motion was made by Huglet, seconded by Tobias to select Weckwert as vice chair. Motion was carried unanimously. Committee discussed whether to make a recommendation to adjust the compensation for Perry City Council members and the mayor. Motion was made by Huglet, seconded by Weckwert, to recommend that council members and the mayor be compensated $30 per regular council meeting, special meeting, or committee meeting, and not to exceed $1,500 per year, and to recommend that the mayor's salary be increased by $1,000 per year from $2,160 to $3,160. Motion was carried unanimously. The meeting adjourned at 7.48. And that is all I have for correspondence. Okay. So moving on from communications uh, to mayor's report, I just wanted to um, share about the events committee. We pretty much talked about that at our last meeting, the uh, open forum meeting, but we do have um, printed copies of the events that have been established um, that begin in August and go into December. Uh, doesn't mean there can't be more added, but we are going to have another meeting of the Community Events Committee. Um, we would like to invite Perry Township to come if they would like to. Uh, we're going to be involving the local churches if they want, Perry VFW, Village of Morris, um, any businesses, and the City of Perry Parks and Properties Committee. We had at our last meeting uh, Dave Myron, the high school principal from Perry, um, Billy Roback from the Perry Historical Society, Carol Pavlika from the Community District Library of Perry, Dory Bortman, the City of Perry Events Coordinator, Mindy Galvavi, our city council member, representative, and myself. Um, we will be meeting again July 12th at 11 here at City Hall. I would like to tell you that we've received hundreds of applications for a treasurer, but that would be lying because we haven't. <laughs> we, we have posted the position um, and I just wanted once again to share that with the public. The um, City of Perry is seeking to fill a full-time treasurer position. Education requirements are associate's degree or equivalent in bookkeeping, accounting, business management, or a related field. 
experience of at least two years. Competitive benefits package is available to full-time employees after the eligibility period. For a complete job description, salary and benefits offered, visit the City of Perry website at www.perry.mi.us. Send letters of interest and resume to City of Perry Mayor, 203 West Polly Street, Perry, Michigan, 48872, or submit in person by 4 p.m. June 28th. The notice has been posted in the Argus on the um, website at SADP, on Facebook, on our website, uh, Michigan Municipal League, and on the front doors of our building. We are still receiving applications for the DPW superintendent and deputy positions. We've gotten two new applications in the last couple of weeks. However, one of those was withdrawn. So we have one uh, applicant now that um, we will be scheduling an interview for. And so that is ongoing. The, um, Regarding the employee compensation proposal that we had read to us tonight, do know that that does not require approval. Council would not be affected by this recommendation until the new term. So as each council person is replaced or re-elected, then the recommendations would go into effect, uh, and same thing for mayor. Um, if you are okay with this, and we do have it down for discussion, but um, if you're okay with it, we just don't have to take any action, it just automatically goes into effect. And I think that was everything there. I do want to tell them about the employee compensation package that I did get done for them that they received it just oh, yes. There, There was a package put together by Devin, the compensation package that we had talked about at a previous meeting um, and giving something to um, our employees on a regular basis so that they would recognize the city's contributions to them. So that is in your package for you to review. We don't need to do anything with it tonight, um, but if you would review that, we can put it on the agenda for the next meeting for any um, discussion that might come up regarding that, how we want to address it. If you do see any additional information you would like on those pages, um, Communicate that to Devin so she can, because she created this, so it's something she can uh, add to. Um, and then the questions that we would need to be thinking about is, is this something that we want to go over on a yearly basis? Do we want to do it retroactively, talking about what they made last year, and then introducing their new wage, or do we want to do it projecting forward? So. Just give thought to how you want that to be done, how you want that to be addressed. Anything else you want to say about that? Just to follow up with what she said, and, and the reason I asked her to discuss that with you is that um, the, the figures that you have in front of you are actuals, and I did a year from May to May to kind of give a, a, a visual. And um, for example, um, what I told the mayor, overtime is actually a benefit. It doesn't necessarily mean it. it's a guarantee that you get it. But in order for you to give an example to be able to show an employee that, I, um, I just wanted you to think about that. So that's why I chose to give you an example in front of you of a fiscal year from a year back from May to be able to give some grand totals. But I don't, I wasn't here the last two meetings. And so I've listened to the mayor, I kind of listened to the minutes a little bit, um, and so I'm not sure I hit on and what you want. So it's in a very easy Excel format. Things can be added, deleted, um, so feedback is welcome. Okay. 
How about committee reports? Do we have any committees that would like to provide a report tonight? I'd like to give just an update. Okay. <clears throat> um, we did order all our exercise equipment under, um, for our new path, and um, I got a call the last week. They received our check, and um, timeline on it went up from six weeks to like three months. Oh, okay. So uh, I said, yes, we'll just keep going with it because by the time we stopped it and tried to find another place, we'd be in the same boat. So instead of going in the summer, it's going to go in this fall. Well, maybe we could put scarecrows around there too, so it would fit uh, in with Hopefully the our benches will still show up in the next three or four weeks, five right. weeks. So. Okay. <clears throat> Anything else? Bob? That's it. Okay. Any other committees? Uh, just a quick update on the uh, ordinance uh, finance committee. As I reported here before, we have had a, and continue to have a uh, proposal with uh, forward to the uh, city attorney with regard to uh, potential uh, plan to enforce violations and what action we'll take. Uh, we've received some feedback from the city attorney, and we are now scheduling a meeting to sit down and, uh, as a committee, discuss uh, what our options are with uh, with Mr. English going forward. It's become a little bit more complicated than we had originally anticipated, but we are, in fact, moving forward with it, and uh, we'll keep you posted in the future. As for the Business Affairs and Technology Committee, uh, those of you that weren't here, we just had a meeting with the uh, uh, a few of the city businesses and uh, surrounding area uh, and we will be meeting again to establish uh, how we plan to move forward at least we've got a kick start now to uh, possibly some uh, collaboration with our local businesses great anybody else thank you committees um, presentation and approval of the bills we move that we approve the bills as presented and the payment be authorized. Second. It's been moved by Larry and seconded by Bob that we approve the bills as presented, payment be authorized. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Moving on to old business, um, regarding the possible approval of library improvements. Last meeting we talked about this, but Devin, our city clerk, said, you didn't do that right. <laughs> so, so we have to revisit that. <laughs> so we do she it right. She did it right. You guys just didn't follow her suit. <laughs> well, it's okay. <laughs> we, we now have, under old business, a motion there for somebody to make, and uh, that will follow through with what we talked about last week, I think. Sorry, Devin. Oh no, that's that's. It, this is a young council mayor. She can pick on me all she wants. I'm just making sure we all are on the same page. That's all. Oh, I move that we indefinitely table the possible <coughs> possible approval of the library improvements. Second. Moved by Bob and seconded by Larry to table indefinitely the possible approval of library improvements. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed, nay. Motion passes. There we go. Now, regarding the police union contract, we do have a proposal back from that negotiation, but I recognize that we just got that today. If you have had sufficient time to review it and you're all comfortable with it we can certainly take action on it tonight it's up to you if you need more time don't feel like we have to do it tonight we can move it to the next meeting agenda so what's your thoughts on that i'd like to move it to the next meeting Mindy would like to move it to the next meeting. I second that because I don't see it to look at it. It was physically hard copy given yeah. to you tonight. 
dry that. So it should be in a pile on the side. Pile on the side. I'm going to go through my pile again. Okay. I tried to organize it so I could go through it. Okay. It'll look like an email on the, on the front of it. Okay. Does someone on council um, want to make a motion to move this uh, decision? Steve, you want to do that? Yeah, I move to table uh, until next council meeting, possible uh, adoption of the police union contract. I second. It's been moved by Steve, seconded by Larry, to table the possible approval of the police union contract. All those in favor signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Motion passes. And Kyle, I assume will probably be at our next meeting? I believe so. He's on vacation this okay. week. Yeah. I'd just like to be able to have his input as such. Sure. Any comments or questions? Yeah. We'll make sure you get one. As a matter of fact, you can you can have this one and I'll get another one. Yeah. Next on our agenda is possible rescinding of our local state of emergency. As many of you know, the governor indicated today that the um, statewide restriction on gathering will be lifted to full capacity on June 22nd. We have a local state of emergency that we need to address ourselves. We can discuss it. We talked about it last week. We had a lot of information that was provided to us about the domino effect of rescinding that emergency. Just reminding you that that will allow us to meet again in council chambers for our meetings, if you want to. We don't have to, but it's best because then we can start renting this space out again. Larry was going to talk to. Um, <clears throat> Thanks, Bob. I had asked that we table it until, until this meeting. We did have a discussion and a vote at the uh, last planning commission meeting, and uh, we did get uh, unanimous support for whatever council's action would be. I indicated that uh, based on the environment, that there's a good possibility that we would be supporting termination. And like I say, there was a unanimous support from the planning commission to do so, if that's our decision. Yeah, I remembered it probably was. Good job. Yeah, very good. I'm glad you remembered that. Um, the Open Meetings Act would require uh, that we have a state of emergency in place to continue having Zoom participation. If we rescind that state of emergency, then we will not have Zoom participation for our council meetings or any of our committee meetings unless someone's in military service and unable to attend, unless by Zoom, or if they are ill and unable to attend unless by Zoom. So those are the couple of things that will be impacted by that. But now moving on, um, do you have more discussion about that topic? Or is someone ready to make a motion? I move that we accept and adopt the resolution which terminates the local emergency agreement which will become effective July 1st, 2021. Second. It's been moved by Larry and seconded by Steve that we rescind the state of emergency effective July 1st. All those in favor of that motion signify by saying aye. 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 All those opposed by nay. Motion passes. I think now we can jump back up to the spot on the agenda. 
where we have our special guests who will be doing a presentation about the food bank. accepted uh, directly and that we had to deal with uh, financial contributions for the food bank and then uh, so I think called some conversation looked at some of the other areas and questioned in particular the time of COVID uh, was it appropriate for the food bank to continue uh, not taking food donations uh, and also to generate a greater awareness or suggested a greater awareness of uh, the existence of the food bank and how to get in touch with them, etc. because with the folks that I talked to from surrounding areas, I was questioned whether or not Perry area still had a food bank, which led me to believe it's not uniformly understood by the community uh, that there is one, how active it is, how to get in touch with it, the only place that I could find any information about the food bank uh, was through the city's website at that time, which linked to a particular page that appeared to be somewhat dated. So the real question is, in my mind, uh, how is the food bank operating? Uh, what is the plans for the future? Is there a way that uh, there's going to can be some increase in communication? And the reason that I'm concerned is twofold whether or not I don't I understand that we as a council don't have direct control of the food bank but by proximity of the food bank being housed in this building by people being told to contact the food bank through a city hall number by association that leads people to believe that we have as a council and the city government have some stake directly in the food bank and that's why one of our businesses, when I was making a contact relative to business communication, the gentleman happened to be uh, Scott Carl's Food raised the question, why weren't we not taking food donations? So, I'm Tammy Richard, and this is Kelly Schmidt and Amy Gunther, um, President, Vice President, Secretary, um, and I can answer your questions. Um, when COVID hit, when the pandemic hit, they were unsure whether the um, virus could be transferred from cans from somebody's home. And I immediately made a decision as president that I wasn't gonna put our volunteers at risk, most of which are retired um, and at the age where they're a danger more for the virus. And I didn't wanna put any of our clients at risk. So we said no until um, the governor opens everything up again. Um, with that said, um, we also were not um, going to Carl's. I was not sending our volunteers to Carl's weekly to get the fresh stuff, but we made up for that by what we gave them. People actually got as much, if not more, from the food bank with what we had stocked at the food bank and what we bring in from um, another outside source. Um, so with that kind of set, and, and our Website wasn't updated because I didn't know we had a website. We don't have a website. No, we don't. We don't. If I, if I could speak to that, Dory uh, Bortman had created that information link. We, we have a link uh, that talks about the library. We have one that talks about the McQueen House, and she thought it appropriate to have information about the food bank. And she found that information. Um, in an archive somewhere. It, it was really describing the development of the food bank and who the original people were who developed it and so on. Yeah. Um, and so that's thus the datedness of it. But we understand now that that was not anything you provided. Dory explained to me it was absolutely her doing, hoping to just give people information and letting them know we had one. Yeah. So, if you so we were a brochure it. that was on the food bank or on the website. A brochure? Was it, did it look like a brochure? Mm, it was just a page. Just a 
just a one page I, I don't know I don't know years ago we put together a, a, a brochure and we we had them stationed we had um, holders stationed at the, yeah down down at the gas stations we they were all over the place and we provided brochures for the public to see that yeah, I think it may have been that because it kind of talked about the uh, original founders of the food bank and yeah. some okay. of the key things that That's the food bank That's how we advertise. Okay. We don't get on Facebook. So that we, we don't have a website, but that's how we did it. Yeah. And it worked fine because people come to us. By word of mouth, it spreads like wildfire. <laughs> and they know if they call City Hall, Devin and the staff know so they just send them to the, you know, they give them the extension, transfer them down to us. So people know that there's assistance and they know how to reach us, even if they don't know the extension themselves, they'll call City Hall yeah. and it'll get forwarded right down. The other thing that was alarming without trying to, you know, dig up old history, uh, in that same conversation that I had, there had been a donation made to Carl's, uh, a significant monetary donation, and he uh, claims that he placed a call to what? Uh, the number and went a number of days with no feedback and no return call and his question was what kinds of things should we be providing he was going to turn it into purchase food etc and in the absence it just led him to question once again uh, was there a, a food bank active food bank in times of COVID and I know to me you indicated to me that 48 hours was a reasonable time frame to expect a return call. So that may have been an anomaly, but I guess my real question be, continues to be, uh, how do we make certain that the community at large understands, in particular, if you're going now with the lifting of restrictions, if you're going back to accepting food donations, is there a plan to spread that word to the community? basically to uh, support the food bank with not only financial but also physical food donations now. So July 1st is when we said we were going to do that, when the governor said she was going to open everything back up. Um, at the time that we decided not to do that, we put a cover over Spalding's. They have a sign out front that says food bank drop. We covered that, and at that time we'll uncover that. And we also put a note down on the can at Carl's, the same thing. So um, we have a note on the food bank door that explains that as well. So that, I mean. Would it be worthwhile to contact the school and maybe put something on that new electronics sign? Food bank is now open for business. We have been open. We have been open We've for business. Never closed. Never closed. Ever. Yeah. Could you? Or but now accepts food bank, food now, now accepting, accepting donations. donations. But could you speak to that? Because I was very interested to hear, Kelly, what you had to tell me on the phone that day That's about right. how you guys operated during the pandemic. I thought that was very impressive. So during, during COVID, we, we set out guidelines for our volunteers. Um, we continually took calls um, from people that needed help. And the way, the way we told the people that we were going to handle it is we would pack their items. We, put a, we have a cart downstairs, we put it on the cart, we pushed it outside the door, and we asked them to provide their proof of residency through the glass window, and there was no contact between our volunteer and them. The only thing, and then they took their food, once we said okay, they took their food, loaded it, and then we sanitized the, the cart as it came back in. We were very cautious because we didn't want any of our volunteers sick. Even, even if it was just um, bringing cans in from somebody's home, it's so different than a store. And we have um, our treasurer, Dave and his wife, Annie, are both older, and they come in and get things all the time and bring boxes in every week. And I was just not, I did not feel safe for them That's right. to have food in there that could or could not be contaminated when they stop in weekly. I just... Other areas decided to do it their way. We did it our way. <coughs> and we, we felt that that was the safest way to keep everybody healthy okay. and it, it was it worked for us so at the last meeting you said it's a shame we didn't do curbside service like that other food bank i just want to point out we did do curbside service the entire 
We still are, really. And it's never the first. I'm not yeah. sure where that came from. Yeah, um, at our last meeting, we did have a, a guest. I don't know if, I mean, we spoke very frankly because, you know, we had our treasurer, Dave and Annie, they decided to retire. So we spoke very frankly about, you know, how are we going to find a replacement for them? And we said if we can't, then we could potentially have to close. Have to close. Volunteers are not easy to get. Ever. Not yeah. at all. Um, people don't like to commit to that kind of thing. So, but then again, you know, we have to screen who we have come in. So it's it's a it's a balancing act. Meaning we can't just have anyone who wants to volunteer be a volunteer. That's what she means. They get a key. We have get a key to your building. Right. Yeah. yeah. So. Amy, I don't recall making that statement. I'm not saying oh. I didn't because I talk a lot here and I don't remember everything I say. But I certainly wouldn't have wanted to offend okay. anyone. Okay. Well, it's okay. We're all getting um, tightened up. Until I talked to Kelly, I had no idea what right. was happening. At I'm Christmas, sure the you had talked about um, gift cards. At Christmas, um, I don't know if you guys have, have were ever downstairs at our Christmas distribution, but it was we bring in we brought in before this year we would bring in upward of ten thousand dollars worth of product to or give more. away um, at Christmas time, and that has to be hauled in by volunteers and stocked in the hallway and it was managed. all staged downstairs. Fresh stuff was purchased at Carl's. It was all staged. But we had contact with, we had contact with people. We were in contact with each other, and it wasn't a good situation. So this year, we decided that we would look at, you know, what we spent the prior years, and then um, based on the size of the families, we would give gift cards out. Based on the size of the families, they got a gift card of anywhere from fifty dollars to one hundred and fifty dollars, depending on the size of the family, and a bag of meat. They also did the same thing. They came, they showed their driver's license or their proof of residency through the glass at that time, and they were able to take it. There was no contact. We'd wash the table, the next one would come in. And we're talking about people coming in every 15 minutes, 10 to 15 minutes. So to have somebody there in contact with the public like that is a very high risk. And that's the way we chose to do it. It worked out very well. Yeah. And I'm not here to dispute the safety and the need for safety throughout all of this. I would just encourage that the food bank consider, is there a way to get that positive message out to the community at large that we always were open, we continue to be open, here's the kinds of things that we have done for the community during COVID and that we want, you know, I'm trying to establish what you said, but we welcome donations, both monetary and our, you know, two key pickup drop points are going to be open or are open, just to publicize the health of the food bank. I don't, I don't see a reason why, um, I got on the Perry community page and just said that the other day, that we've been open during this whole time, um, we've been seeing clients and got a positive response from lots of people. There was a lady that asked me about donating food and I said, I'll let you know when we're, you know, accepting that. I don't see why I can't do that on the community page again. Mm -hmm. So in the other reference about um, calling back, we are a list, um, I think there are six or seven of us that six. do food orders, six. And so it's rotating. There's six people that rotate the food orders and they're all volunteers. So there might be times when somebody gets a call and doesn't get a call back right away. I mean, that, that's going to happen. No, I understand. Yeah. My, I, my volunteers are, are wonderful and amazing, but they all have lives and we all forget stuff and, and stink old age is Some bad of us are working reason. more than a job. Even, so. <laughs> so, but like, yes. If you would like to have us put a link for information about the food bank, We've taken off that old information because Kelly asked us to do that, so we did. But if you would like us to put information on there, we're happy to do it. Okay. We have a board, a community information board down at Carl's now too, understanding that not everybody looks at the website. Um, and we would be happy to put that printed 
uh, information on that board as well. We change that out every two weeks and try to freshen it up, but we could rotate it through. If you're interested in that, we, we would be more than happy to do that. If you want to uh, give potential volunteers information of how they could uh, apply to be a volunteer, we'd be happy to include that on there as well. Whatever we can do to help. I think the absolutely. biggest thing is, is if someone's asking a question, refer them to us. Yeah, absolutely. There's, yeah. That way there's no miscommunication anywhere. Yeah. You know, we've been open. Sorry, Tammy, I do that all the time. We <laughs> have not given gift cards out except at Christmas. We have been open for the public. <clears throat> Unfortunately, in our society that we live in, social media, one thing said, and that becomes someone's perception of the truth. Yeah, right. Yeah. So and when it's, it's wrong, hard it's... to combat once yes. that's out. That's right. um, but I agree with Sue that if we could put something on the website, one, support you, and two, if there's a way to say volunteers contact one of you three or whatever, mm -hmm. um, because I knew it was there, but I, not that I have any more time, but you know, <laughs> the community of all is important. Um, it is. And I'm sure your need has increased during this time. It has not. It hasn't. Really? No. The government well, that's has, good. The I government guess. has given a lot of money to people. And she just gave another, um, anybody eligible for um, food assistance just got an extra paycheck this, this month. So, okay, we've well, seen your need will increase soon then when yeah, it's it probably shuts will. off. Yeah. I, you keep talking about you want information posted here, you want information posted here. We, we can talk about this at our next meeting, but things are changing. In fact, just at our last meeting, we're thinking about changing how we distribute food and stuff. So the more places you have information published, that information becomes outdated. And then you again have communication problems. So if you want to, just our phone number. People can call us when a business owner has a question. You can give them our phone number. We'll call them back. I mean, it's very rare that we don't call back. Um, and so, because then they're always getting the most up-to-date information from the volunteer on duty, and some calls we would hand off to to Kelly and Tammy. The, regular, the volunteers would do that. So you'd rather we didn't have anything on our website about the food bank? I think about the, the fact I, that there's a wonderful food bank. No, you know, very <laughs> certain no. people. I would like people to know that. I think, I think, it's, it's, wonderful. Wonderful. I think it's fine. I think it's fine to have something on the website if that's what you guys want to do. Um, but refer them to us. So oh, absolutely. Well, so can you just say it's I, 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 That's why I say to you, if you would like something there, give us the information. I don't want the same thing to happen that happened before. Right. I don't actually, want information on there that you don't want. I, think I, actually, I would just like information that you want on the website. But I would like people to know. I had a lady who is the chairman of the Looking Glass Association, um, Kathy Prolines, so I'll mention her by name. She called and said, is the food bank closed? And I said, well, I, they're, you know, like not there, but no, they're not closed. And she said, no, I, it, on, the, on Facebook, it says they are out of business, they're closed. They're, and I said, I, Kathy, I just don't think that's right. So I said, hey, Devin. <laughs> Are they closed? She said, no, they're not closed. So I misunderstood what Devin said about what you've been doing. So I gave, I said to Kathy, they've been giving gift cards. She was telling me about Christmas. I was hearing year round. But that being said, <laughs> That's I, I told Kathy, <laughs> yes, they're, they're functioning. They're doing stuff. They're doing what they do. Um, and she had said to me, I, I looked everywhere I thought to look. I looked on Facebook, I looked on the community page, I looked on the, what your website, I looked, and I just couldn't find any information about the food bank. So that's, I would like, if somebody wants information, wants to know, does Perry have a food bank? I would one, like them to know what we've got. One is we are really not a food bank. We are a, an emergency relief council. Good. Then let, and now again, that's why I need you guys to write the thing. It yeah. needs to be right. Yeah, it needs to be right. Can we just do a general paragraph that yep. there is a food bank in Perry that's open 
and just the no information that would yep. be outdated. Absolutely, just, yeah. Uh, no. and then Actually, I think that that brochure that you took exactly. down that was I think that was okay. I think that was up to date. So I don't know what your demographics are so the people who at me help yeah. sir, <laughs> but younger people. I have a couple millennials, you know, children, and if they can't find it on the website, they don't always call. They want to text. They want to look on a website. I know you laugh, but it's reality. Yeah. But I'm, I'm 58. I find myself looking for something about. online all the time. Where is, oh, I can't yeah. find it. Heck with it. So yeah. you have to change the times. Yeah. Yeah. So, it's, it's actually up to you. I, you can talk about it at your meeting. I mean, it can be this much information. The Emergency Relief Council is um, able to be contacted by calling this yes. number. That's the kind of thing. And we that's, can do that. if that's yes. what you yeah, want on there, that's what we'll put there. on there. Because yeah. through the phone number, that's how they get their food. Because they're going to have to talk to a volunteer and make an appointment. Yep. That's a question I get. When are you open? And I'm like, it's by appointment only. We've always been like that. And that might be something good to have on there. Well, if they call us and it says it right on the message, that's one of us will call back. And so, yeah, if you can get the phone number out there, I think it's fine. Yeah. The only other way, thing that I do know that, that your phone number would be out there is 211 always contacts us every year to update that information. But it's just, they just want that basic question. You know, what are the hours? It says by appointment only. I mean, so, and again, I guess the reason why I brought that up is because the keyword you said an emergency. And that's what the 211 number is for, is that if you cannot pay for your rent or heat or water. And we're listed under 211. Right. You call 211 to try to, they will help to see where to direct you to get to Capital assistance. Capital area in Owasso, mm -hmm. or Corona, Owasso, uh, they have us listed as food services. But I think because it's located in the City Hall building, I think people might assume this is who to contact. So if there is something on our website that will take them to that, yeah. it will be helpful for them to get started. Mm -hmm. You know, just that's where I would look because I know what's here in the building. Or even if volunteers want to know how can I volunteer or apply to volunteer? They might look on that site to see. Sure. So if you just would include that contact information if it's different. Uh, yeah. Yeah. We can do that for sure. Yeah. And I think it would be outdated. Yes. Not to be labor, but I think what I'm sensing is that the, I call it the downstream folks that needed assistance were fully aware, but I call it the upstream, those that want to be in a position to contribute to help support the activity. Are probably the area that I just encourage you to make certain that the message is out there for them as well. Well, the system, here's what we were doing for that. What I, I have, can I tell about how the donations are? So when, when we stopped taking donations, um, the, the, the assumption was that the need is great because you saw all, all over the news, right? Food insecurity is a big problem and problem well. Um, so people were eager to give which is a bummer because we had to quit taking donations, but people were eager to give donations. And we just told them because the system works. They leave a message, we call them back, and we just say, oh, we're, we're thankful that you want to donate, but we can't do that right now, but we're happy to take money. You know, because then we can get what we need, which we do with the staples anyway. And so the donations, the monetary donations, have greatly increased since COVID started. So the upstream of people not knowing how to help wasn't a problem because they did help. Our community is fantastic. And when people come and they get an order of food, they, they thank us, they thank the volunteer. And I say, and I think we all say, don't thank me, thank your community. Because they gave, they, they used to drop off stuff and they gave money. That's where this comes from, is from your community. And so, Annie, Annie and Dave said at the last meeting that it's a regular thing weekly that they get stopped by people in the community giving them on the street. On the street because they've been 30 years here working at the food bank. They know. People know. The ones that call, you know, are a, probably a small few, but, but people know us. We have little um, um, women who have lost their husbands who donate $10 like every month on the month. There's a check in the mail to Annie every month by the month. So our community is awesome. Yep. Our little small. 
Perry Moore Shasper community does really, really good for each other. That's right. Very supportive. Council, do you have any other questions for these ladies from the from the emergency relief council? <laughs> Thank you so much for coming. Can I add just one more thing to put in your minutes? Kelly and Tammy work really hard for this community. You guys do, and they've worked really hard for a long time. And this community is better for having them volunteer and do the good work you guys have done. Thank you. If you I'm happy. on kid board, that's why I said thank you. <laughs> if you do, if you want information, we have quarterly meetings, fourth Monday. Um, January, April, July, and October. Yep. Um, so that could go on your website information too. Could. Okay. Yep. Yeah. But yeah, the stuff that doesn't change, we'll right. definitely put on there. And Absolutely. You know. Uh, yeah. We, we want, want to put we that want together. We want to know we're too. That's or me or Dory or whoever, but we'll get it on there. Yeah. That's the whole point. We do what we do is so that people can get help. So right. We want them to know we're here just as much. So. And that's wonderful. Um, I heard you say that Annie and Dave are retiring from the are. relief council. Are you going to do something? I mean, <laughs> <laughs> yes, we found a new treasurer. Um, and we're Stacy Smith with, and we're having a get together too. Is that oh. what you're asking about, Sue, or the treasurer? Yeah, is there going to be some yeah, kind of a, be a memorial? Oh, yeah. I think the next meeting, oh. which will be July. Yes. Okay. I think um, we're, we, I asked Dave and Annie if they would come. Okay. And they said, well, we'll see. but. <laughs> yeah, just yeah. you'll have to surprise them because they probably don't want the recognition. Probably not. Well, that's great. Thirty well, they're reading to kids. Uh -huh. 30, 30 yep. years they worked for the food bank. They they oh are gosh. eager to get back to their mentoring. mentoring. Yeah. So I said, just tell them that they're reading to kids. A little bit. <laughs> <laughs> if you ever are asking for nominations for some sort of a community service award in Perry in the next while. Think well, I think yeah, we could probably come up with a resolution at least recognizing their donation of time to the community. Um, what date is the meeting? It's the fourth month, Monday, right? Mm -hmm. You got it. 26th. July 26th. July 26th at what time? 7 o'clock. At where? In your chambers. Oh, that's it. Feel free to spread that word to the Village of Morris Council and the Woodhall Township Council as well, Perry Township Hall, because we serve all of those areas, not just Perry City. They've given to all those communities. Again, thank you very much for coming. We appreciate your time. Yes, thank you. Thank you. We'll move on to new business then and uh, the fourth quarter budget comparison and possible amendments. Joe Veldstein. after the end of the fourth quarter while well, I was informed by the auditors that <laughs> I'm not supposed to do that. <laughs> so this is my <coughs> preemptive as best I can recollect and figure out um, what we're going to need for budget amendments. Um, for the fourth quarter, I have proposed nine budget amendments. Eight of them are in general fund and um, a lot of them are self-explanatory and I have one of them in the drug enforcement. So, um, and the page numbers are listed on the last column and where the funding is going to come from for these new amendments. So, I'll um, get started with those. The first one in general, line number 101210-000-826-000. This is for attorney fees. I'm requesting a $2,000 increase. This is coming from reallocated expenses. In other words, expenses in general fund that weren't used, either it be supplies or health insurance or whatever, is going to be um, moved to our attorney fees. The original budget 
is $17,000 for this line item. The new total is going to be $19,000. That's on page four. The second adjustment, 101-253-000-702-002, treasurer's salary. I'm in requesting a $6,000 increase. This is from reallocated expenses. The original budget was 40730 the new one is going to be 46730 and this is for the wages for our trainee that we had. And the, um, uh, it's, on page, it's on page five. And again, if you'll look through, they're shaded. So any of the pages they have adjustments on there, you can find them easily. Okay, the third one is 101-269-000-931-000. McQueen House, Building and Browns. I'm requesting a $1,000 increase. The original budget was $100. So the new total is going to be $1,100. And that's on page 5. The next one, again, is McQueen House, 101-269. 000970 McQueen House Capital Outlay. I'm requesting an increase of $5,000. The original budget was $14,300. The new budget total is going to be $19,300. And that's for the repairs, the tree, the foundation. The, um, all of the repairs that they approved for the McQueen House, and then it's also on page five. Um, the next adjustment is for police part-time salaries, 101-305-000-702-400. Um, this is for police part-time. I'm requesting an increase of $15,000. This is from reallocated expenses. The original budget was $34,000. The new budget total is $49,000. Now this is directly because of, uh, we were down a police officer, and when the officers are off sick, the part-time officers fill in the hours. And so what you're doing is you're filling full-time position with part-time employees. So um, that adjustment is, on, is needed, it's on, line item is on page five. Um, okay, and in the police department, we also have one line item for equipment rent. 101305000943000. I'm requesting an increase of $36,970. This is increase is funded by surplus revenues. This is the revenue that we received for the COVID that was put into the general fund. So it's in the general fund and what we are doing is we are moving that to help cover the cost of the new police car which we cannot lease the car because we have grant money that's coming from USDA and in order to get the grant money we have to pay for the car outright. So this increase of 36,970 is going to help accomplish that. So the new budget total for that line item is 51,570 and that's on page 6. Uh, we have one, the next one is for zoning 101-410-000-962-000. I'm requesting an increase of $3,500. This is coming from reallocated expenses. Our general original budget was $3,000, and so the new budget total is $6,500, and that's on page 7. In the zoning department, that 
whole department has very few lines. So if it's under, I have no place in that department to take it from. So I have to make sure to, so when that department shows up on the audit, the whole department will be under budget. So that's why I required that adjustment. And the last one in general is 101890-0009620000. This is miscellaneous expense recycling. We approved to have a $1,500 contribution to the recycling in Lanesburg, and this is how we get it in the budget. So I'm requesting a $1,500 increase, again, from reallocated expenses, which are expenses that weren't spent, weren't used. The original budget for that line item was zero, and the new line item is $1,500. So that's the only item that's coming out of that, and that is on page eight. So our general total budget for the year 2021, $1,307,103. And the last amendment is for drug enforcement. This is a separate fund that was used or is used for when the police department make a stop, they confiscate drugs, they confiscate money. Um, if that money is given or turned over to the police department as part of the process, then that is kept separate. And in setting up the budget, just we have to have a line item to spend money out of that fund. And so this is, um, this is for that one. It's fund 265-300-000-757 operating supplies. I'm requesting an increase of $200. The original budget was $500. The new budget total is $700 and that's on page 12. Again, there's very few items in that drug fund budget that if it's over, under, under, over, over, under, so it normally corrects itself or comes out ahead of the game. This one, I didn't have money to pick from, so that's why I requested that change. So the drug enforcement budget for the whole year is $1,700. Council, do we have any questions for our treasurer? I have one. It's just curiosity. No. <laughs> <laughs> What's your question? Go ahead. Yeah, I think you're seeing Nobody has asked yeah. questions. You um, just threw me for a loop. I'm like, oh, okay. What? what it's, it's just curiosity. You said that the capital life for the Queen House, the trees and stuff were in there. Shouldn't that be under maintenance? That's where it was charged to. Nine seventy. Capital okay. outlay. I don't know that we have a maintenance account for that. I uh, just you have ground, building and grounds maintenance as a line item. I just it, I don't know accounting. I, I just think it probably was. I think that was where the most money was, so they put it in that. Okay. So, but you're probably right. That's all. I just it's kind of you're to right. me that's it's not really capital outlay. Like repairing the roof and the stuff like that, yes, <laughs> but not the fixing the or yeah. treating the trees or trimming them and that stuff. It's it's semantics. Really, it's just curious. Anyone else? We do need to consider approving these amendments as the treasurer's requested. Uh, there's a motion uh, suggesting that. If anyone is interested in making that motion, I move that we approve the following fourth quarter budget amendments as presented by the treasurer. Second. And it's been moved by Steve, seconded by Larry, as read. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. All those opposed by nay. Motion passes.
Thank you, Joanne. Um, also, just just for a note, in this budget, there is not a McQueen House fund, but that will um, the journal or the account numbers have all been created. The fund balance numbers have been created. They will start in the next year for the start of the first of July. And that way, funds can accrue in there for future things. The money will yes. be there. We won't have to move it, move it, move it. Right. Okay. Okay, next on our agenda, a possible adoption of ordinance amendment that uh, Larry and Steve read and read and read at the last meeting. <laughs> Larry, can you remind me what that was? <laughs> Oh, don't read it. No, no, no. We don't have to read it again. That's fine. I move that ordinance number 353, which was read at the June 3rd, 2021 regular council meeting, be adopted. Second. Been moved by Larry, seconded by Bob, that the ordinance 353 that was read at the June 3rd, 2021 regular council meeting be adopted. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. And those opposed, nay. Motion passes. Now we have discussion, and Devin's going to take over on this, regarding the employee health care policy. So I gave you a copy of... Um, just the page in the personnel policy that addresses um, that we give help provide health insurance uh, to the employees. Um, we also have to follow the state rules on the amounts, on, and there is a resolution that has been passed uh, since 2011 when. Governments were going bankrupt. The state government came in so that they could be the bad guy instead of local governments um, telling their employees that they can't give them health insurance anymore. There were guidelines. So we're still following them. Um, it is following the Public Act, uh, Public Employer Contributions to Medical Benefit plans, annual cost limitations. Um, we're compliant hard cap levels on the amounts for that. That is figured out every year. And um, I'm not sure what more details you want. I did some research just in case you had questions because I wasn't here at the meeting to know for sure. So do we start at uh, questions or? I think Randy was the one that actually had questions about this before and unfortunately he had to leave. Um, but if anybody else has questions, he'll have this information to look over. Maybe he could just be in touch if he has anything. Should I follow up with an email with him and see if he that, wants to talk a little bit more? might be a good idea. Okay. Yeah. Anybody else? No? Okay. That motion, or excuse me, that discussion has ended. And now we have discussion regarding the new equipment to rent with the hall rental. Remember last meeting we talked about that new equipment we were going to have and we needed to have the rental policy amended and the fee schedule amended. And Devin has done that. So again, um, I try to interpret as much as possible. Um, just like GIS should have been GPS, I did want to make sure that I did understand and interpret what you guys are asking. So with the help of Shirley, um, there is kind of a process with it. What I interpret um, out of the conversation was is that you were looking to include the projector and the speakers with the roll cart would be utilized in this building, but utilized through the renting of it for the community room and for council chambers. So in the community room policy, you can see that it's highlighted on page three and it incorporates, all it does is say that, that it is available to rent. And then 
we created a projector rental agreement. And so you will see the idea of it is, is for the safety and to be able to keep up with it is that a credit card would be a valid credit card would be necessary if they should damage to be able to replace it. But for the amount that we have suggested of the $75, I want to say that if we would have it rented once a month, that would be eight months that all the speakers and the projector would be um, paid for. So for one, if it would get broke, and again, technology gets outdated. So we were trying to find a reasonable amount. Um, when we looked around, we couldn't find places that where a facility was renting them out, like except maybe a hotel where they're like in that type of deal. We found a lot of companies that were actually renting the equipment out. I mean, like that's all they do is like a rent type of deal. And probably the minimum they were charging was 125 to like $300 to do the comparable units that um, we have purchased. So we were trying to find a reasonable rate. Our thought process, and again, this can change, and this is why I'm bringing it to you to get your input. Um, these are drafts. It's not gonna be taken outside. It's not gonna be taken to somebody's home. So although it's at risk, it's gonna stay on the roll cart. It, it doesn't have as much um, liability, in my opinion, to make a person spend 125 or more to, on top of renting the facility that they would be using it for. And it is my understanding that they would be using, so I'm assuming what might happen is these graduations and wedding receptions is that they might use it for a slideshow. And I want to make sure that we're okay with that because making it available for a meeting Again, less liability. It's stay put, everybody's sitting down. You put it at a function of 200 some people, and I don't mind that. I'm just making sure that I understood what you wanted that to be available to the public. <clears throat> now on the other note, I believe one of the conversations that was brought up by council, although we're opening up to the public the other aspect of it is there's nothing saying that we couldn't have a presentation from somebody not physically here. So my thought process is it's $15.99 a month for us to carry the Zoom that we have currently so that we don't have a time limit. But if we would have somebody that was still working from home, still hasn't ventured out, I have no idea why they would, but if they're still in that environment and would want to make a presentation, we have that. More than likely, they already have their Zoom. We would join theirs and we could have them, this was my thought process if you haven't already discussed it, is they would be talking to us and we wouldn't have that feedback because the speakers and the we would only have that going on. We wouldn't, you wouldn't need your phone, and it would only be them talking to us. So I believe that's kind of how your conversation started. You wanted to have that kind of communication. Um, I still wouldn't, it would be tricky. You would have to have lots of rules if we continued with our meetings with Zoom. You would literally have to make sure there are rules of when you would speak and when they would speak. But I. I did think, I did just add to the mayor that we could still have presentations and they could be physically on the screen where everybody in the room could see, and, you know. Um, so anyways, so you have a policy change that is cur cur currently in place, a projector agreement, and also along with that, you always have to amend your fee schedule, and so I've given you a copy of that. And I'm done. Sorry, Larry. It's okay. I just, be quiet. I just had two notes on the projector rental agreement. Sure. I think it's implied in here, but you might consider uh, <coughs> only available in conjunction with a room rental. I know you stated that, but 
uh, and it's implied in here when I read it, but you know, to be right up front, and, say, and the equipment must remain in the rented room. Mm -hmm. In other words, you can't come here and, and rent the equipment and take it off site for a, an event. Okay. to this rental agreement? Yeah, this is fantastic. I've used conference center stuff before and used the equipment. They always include service. Have you included in that contract about service? So if someone comes on a Saturday, they can't get the speakers to work. They can't get the projector to work. Is someone on call to come and help them? Make sure that's in there. I did. I put Good. it in there. There's no instructions. But we, we don't supply any of that kind of stuff um, because I did Probably the only um, copycat help I got was a few libraries offered it, mm -hmm. and they actually had that kind of wording in it, and I'm like, that is perfect, because we are not the techs, we're not going to be able to fix right. or do anything like that. And it could be your, the equipment, or it could be their problem. So then if they can't get it to work, they can get their money back, though, right, if it never works for them? It's a good it discussion. It could be the light bulb, it could be the cord. They are supposed to at least contact us immediately when it doesn't work. So awesome. that, that, is word, that is worded in, in there. Um, I will share, because Amy is here and we're on camera, <coughs> is that um, this is the only screen we have available. So if you want it somewhere else or something else, we, we are going to be telling the public that they would have to bring their own portable screen. And the Chambers also does not have a screen. So this isn't part of the rental, but it's free and it's available. So if a person can utilize it, it's there. So. It'll be new, and, and we'll see how it works. This is um, going to be a new avenue for us. And the great thing about the project or rental agreement is um, the administration can, can fix this to modify so that we're collecting everything. Council, will, we will be asking for the definite approval of the amendment to the policy and the fee schedule. So if there's any other input, please email me if you see anything else or ideas, and then uh, we'll clean this up and uh, bring it to next council meeting if that's okay. Council, does that sound good? All right. So as you're uh, having your bedtime reading, make notes and other notes. Okay. Next on our agenda, possible adoption of affirmative statement for RHS Employer Investment Program. This allows um, Devin to uh, act as trustee for this program, so I'm going to, again, let her field any questions you have about it or any information you want to provide. I apologize that this is broken up, but because of COVID, this company is very safe, and so they give me a lot of paperwork and a lot of reading, and it's a lot of legal. This is last one that you approved was authorizing the agreement to have a trust. Now this one is um, a, doing an affirmative statement that we are going to use their model of their agreement or their firm statement and then also naming a trustee. And once you do this, then it goes into more paperwork and the attorney has verified that once you um, make your trustee, then I can get all the paperwork and the um, trust account can actually be made, which Joanne's aware of, and then we will fund start it. being taught how to fund it and take money out of it, because we're going to do both. And so I'm asking you to consider the resolution tonight. Any questions for Devin about that? I do. Yes, RHS, is that the new name for what was Ignar? No. They're called Mission Statement. I move that we accept and adopt the affirmative <coughs> statement for RHS employer resolution, which is, accepts the suggested adoption of services for trust and approve 
the city clerk as trustee. Second. Steve has moved and Bob has seconded a motion as read regarding the uh, adoption of this affirmative statement. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. Aye. Those opposed by nay. Motion passes. Next on our agenda is um, Council's possible acceptance of the resignation by Adam Grass that Devin read for us earlier. Sad to have to consider that. Um, he was a great uh, contributor to the city and uh, of his time and his knowledge and we'll miss him. He has resigned, so Council, what's your pleasure? I move that we accept the resignation of Adam Grass from City Council, effective immediately, with regrets. Second. It's been moved by Bob and seconded by Mindy that we accept the resignation of Adam Grass with regrets. All those in favor of that motion, please signify by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Motion passes. And that leads us to the fact that now I need a new mayor pro tem because that was one of Adam's um, positions. And I have asked Larry Lambert if he would serve as mayor pro tem. So I am appointing him to that position and would like council's approval. I move that we approve the mayor's appointment of Larry Lambert as mayor pro tem. Second. And Steve has made that motion. Mindy's seconding the appointment of Larry Lambert as mayor pro tem. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Motion passes. Do we have any other business that may come before council? I do. Yes. <coughs> Gretchen Whitmer, our governor's uh, June 22nd of the pandemic, the orders are of gatherings and the masks are 100%, they're 100 done. Um, is council willing to give Mayor and I direction of, are we? definitely July 1st opening up for this rental and moving your council downstairs you could still have it on the council meetings yes but that's the up and the down the tables and and, and I would like to I, I would like us to move downstairs if we're going to open up rentals do we need to have a motion for that um it wouldn't it wouldn't hurt that you all agree that that you're going to as of July 1st open up rentals and it doesn't have to be July 1st. July 1st was pertaining to the Open Meetings Act for the most part of the motion you made earlier. So you, you could make it as of June 27th. And our next council meeting will be July 1st, but correct. Right. It is, and that was the other reason why I was I was going to see on that. And then, um, but anyways, I would appreciate some direction, and I think the mayor would too. On, I move that City Council re start back in council chambers effective July 1st, 2021. Second. We have a motion uh, that council meet in chambers starting July 1. Bob made the motion, Larry seconded. All those in favor, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Do you need another motion regarding allowing the rental of this room to start that day as well? I don't think that would hurt either, only because the pandemic caused some hardship between um, the beginning mayor and council. And so it was made a point that council was going to make the final decisions whether we open or closed. So I think. Uh, to follow that suit to the end, that council should probably make that final decision too. I have one Anyone? question before we make that motion. 
what other activities are currently going on routinely in this room other than the council meeting and the planning commission? Routinely? Yeah, like, say, a, like our parks and property? Parks and property meet up here, but we can, I mean, I, I don't know, if it's rented, we can go downstairs, and like I said earlier, if it's nice out, I think we're going to meet off the pavilion. I'm going to say, any committees will go down, any any meetings will now move right. so I think to chambers? All I'm saying is that if we elect to open this up for rentals, the follow-up to that becomes that, you know, all the other meetings that were being held here really need to be you know, held downstairs. Correct. Simply and because we won't continue to have this set up in a meeting format. And, and that's why I appreciate some direction because again we we've, we've got a standard because we've had all of our meetings up here. We're gonna have to clean our doors, we're gonna have to inform the public, we're gonna have to put on the website and let them know that all meetings are moving back that's to their point. normal council. Okay. Well, okay. I, since we're talking about that too, um, yes, all of the uh, markings on the floor downstairs that direct people where to walk in, where to walk out, to stay safe distancing, and any references to mask wearing and that type of thing, all of that should be removed as well. And that information that's on the website about that too, when you come, please abide by the I would own, I would I would agree with you. Let me check my OSHA to make sure because okay. we're a government to make sure that we're following our rules okay. as customer service. Where you're talking about correct? You're talking about the second floor. Yes. Yeah. I okay. would assume we we're going to be able to clean everything out, but let me check with my. What OSHA. I've seen just from re the retail stores that I occasionally go into is fully vaccinated. It says something about fully vaccinated people. You know, walk without a mask. If you're not, please wear a mask. Something along those lines. We the OSHA rules, I think, are similar to that. I know in my office they have something along those lines. And that's all I would want to double check. But yes, I will make note of it to double check that. And it's so that can clear. just happen. It doesn't have to be something council has to <coughs> do. I don't think so. The okay. only thing I would want to do is the rentals was one thing that that the council helped shut down. I would I would appreciate a motion to support that their reservations would be open. Okay, so council, we need, um, if you're comfortable with it, a motion that allows uh, reservations and rental of this room to resume, if you're comfortable. I move that we allow uh, reinstate rentals of the community center uh, room effective July 1st, and that all subsequent uh, meetings that are typically held here would reconvene or be held in the council chambers or other alternate location. Second. Okay, we have a motion, uh, as you heard, by Larry, seconded by Steve. All those in favor of that motion, please indicate by saying aye. 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 Those opposed by nay. Motion passes. This brings us to another time of public comment. Do we have anyone here who would like to have any other comment from the public? I have one thing I could say. Go ahead. Amy. From the earlier discussion with um, the earlier town hall, when you were brainstorming, um, especially the superintendent of Terry Schools, who was here brainstorming you and her back and forth about, she was um, looking for collaboration, which sounds wonderful. But you had mentioned this is just I know just ideas. Nobody's moving forward with this, but um, hanging flags that promote Perry Schools. As the public, I would hope that that money would come from the school to pay for the flags and yes, not from the city. Okay. Yeah, it was. All right. Yeah, I didn't want to spend a yeah, whole lot of time defining the details of, of that yeah. meeting, uh, but yes, the school representative, Dave Myron, the high school principal, uh, specifically said the school would like to purchase flags to do that. So, yes. Yeah. Anybody else? Council discussions, observations you'd like to make, Council? Any additional items? Items for our next agenda? I think we've got those pretty clearly defined. Devin, do you think you're all set with that? Yes. This meeting is adjourned at 8.35.